Hey guys, welcome to the next Critique the Community. Today we are going to be critiquing joyful imagery while we are trapped inside under quarantine. And if you would like to be a part of the next critique, we are going to do something a little different. Normally we say, you know, upload your best photo you've ever taken in this genre. But this time we're going to say, we only want to see images that you have taken within the last few weeks since you have been home under this quarantine thing. And we realize that, you know, many people don't feel like taking pictures right now. You feel like you don't really have anything to take a picture of. Or you've only been in quarantine for a week while somebody else has been in a quarantine for a month or two. But we are going to try to encourage you to create imagery for this next critique. And by doing that, uh, we are actually going to be giving every single photographer that we choose a free tutorial in the next critique. Normally it's the top rated one and it's the uh, okay. random one. Wow, that's putting it out on the line and there. Next one, there will be 20 free tutorials from fstoppers.com slash store. We also assume this will have one of the lowest uh, submission rates simply because it's not images that you can just go in your portfolio and pull out and submit. Yeah. You actually have to shoot these pictures. So uh, you have a very good chance of winning. So go to fstoppers.com slash contest and upload your pictures. Are you ready to rate this? Yep. What do you think? Are you ready on this? This is the highest rated image in the entire critique. There's something wrong if this is the highest rated image. Either this will be the worst critique of all time or somebody just recently uploaded this picture and it didn't get many votes and that's how this is the highest rated. I picked the images and the ratings were especially low. I don't know that this is my favorite, but... This, I mean, this is, it, is it one of the best images of this critique? Um, it's up for debate. <clears throat> Joy is so ambiguous, so... We're gonna see a large variety of images here. Oh, this is about to be right. rough. Three, two, one. You go two? I'm in between a two and a three. You know, I I, I don't feel like the image is bad. Um, well, clearly it needs work. Uh, it does need work, but I, you know, I'm just thinking in terms of a portfolio, is this what I would put in a professional photographer's portfolio? I can't even tell what this is. Is this family portraiture? It's like family, they're too young to be seniors. But well, they it's don't like, look like they're within the same family. They look like two friends, but they look super young. It doesn't feel like fashion or lifestyle photography. It seems kind of like a snapshot of, of like your daughter and her friend while you're testing out your new light. That's what it feels like to me. Yeah, but it also feels like it could belong in some kind of family portrait portfolio or something. Like how many times have you shot families at the beach and multiple families are there or multiple friends are there and they're all like taking a vacation and you still wind up taking a picture like this. I know, but it feels like they're posing in front of a junkyard or something in a prison in the back. I, I do agree with that. It's just a very strange location. Um, the lighting looks really nice. I like the shallowed up the field. I like that the photographer got low on their level, but because these girls don't really look like family and they're in such a strange location. I don't think I care about at all if they're related. <clears throat> That's the like, well, least of my problems here. I gave it a three. I still think it's a pretty solid image. I agree the background looks kind of out of place for sure. And then I just feel like they look out of place. Like they're just sitting in the middle of a walkway. It's not like they're up against something they might have been up against. Like if you, had, right. if you had a group of girls, two girls, and they're like on a fence, you might say, well, that's where they were sitting. Right. It just seems like they fit into the location. Right. Right. This does not feel like they fit in the location at all. I'm not saying that people have to look the same to be in photographs together. I'm just saying that you can, you can see images of young people and go, oh, that's a family portrait. And your mind goes right to that genre of photography. Yeah. But with these two girls, they just look like they're friends. And yeah. so it feels a little more strange. But it's me. also not shot like a gap ad or something. Maybe right. you would add a third person, but like you could have it to where they're, the sh clothes are showed off a little bit more or like the girl with her legs pointing towards the camera, that's kind of a strange pose yeah. regardless of what you're shooting. Yeah. I can't recall any amazing photograph I've seen where like the legs are coming straight at the camera like that, but. Hey, you gave it three stars and community somehow gave it 3.35. You are the winner of a free tutorial from fstoppers.com slash store. Send me a private message on fstoppers and let me know what you want and I will give it to you. Next up.
Are you ready? I think so. Three, two, one. You're going four. I am. You know, I think it's funny. Didn't we didn't we critique an image in the last critique or the one previously where it was an old guy standing in front of a colorful background? And it we was like, like the guy who was acting like Larry David who's acting <coughs> like Bernie Sanders. Yeah, and we were like, this image isn't that good by itself, but with the interesting crop and the wacky colored background, it feels professional. Yeah. And I feel like this is better. I feel like the lighting is super professional. Love the expression on this girl. And then to have that pink flat background just makes it feel like this should be the cover of a magazine or something. There's two things that bother. And I gave this a three. I think it's a solid image. Just two things that bother me. And maybe people are going to rail me for saying this. I feel like her eyelashes look unnaturally long. And I keep going to the eyelashes. And then something about her hand. It's like her fingers look so small with the way they're placed. And it feels like I almost would rather the crop be higher and, like, that her hand not be there at all. Like, you can't really crop it now because it's almost too tight of a crop. <clears throat> yeah. Maybe there's a way to do it. But if her hand wasn't there and then you cropped a little bit, it would feel more natural. But, like, it, it almost feels like she is naked and she's holding up something to prevent herself from being naked on set. And it just feels like... See, that's what I, that's what I assumed the point was. And when you see this in a magazine and it would have the title, you'd, you'd get it. You know, it'd be about the, the fashion designer who's running out of cloth or something. I don't know what it would be. I mean, obviously, like, there could be a better story. And a title in graphic design could make that. But the expression's great. The lighting's great. There, I may also just, like have moved her right shoulder a little differently or retouch out just the little bit of natural wrinkle that comes in the neck? Maybe, maybe. That doesn't bother me too I mean, bad. if I'm going to put it to a four or five, <clears throat> okay. I'm going to say it's like a world class. You gave the last image and this image a three. Which but I'm one putting of these them two in, is better? This one's better, but okay. I'm putting them in totally different portfolios. I still think you can make money with a, a image like that, but you're probably just going to be shooting family portraits. This isn't going to be a gap ad. Or something, you know, like, we already talked about that one, but I still think they're solid. Okay. Community, 2.85. You have to pick a random number again. Number two, sorry. <laughs> You're not a winner. Number four. Number four, okay. Now, this image was super low res when I tried to download it. But it also seems like it kind of has an effect to make it, like a grain to make it feel lower res. So hmm. maybe higher res wouldn't have been that much better. But I'm just looking at his tri his monopod. It's got the... Now, is this a guy or a girl? This looks like some tight pants. I'm not going to go down that road again, Lee. <laughs> we get in trouble. Anytime we mention gender. Why does it matter? Somebody is infuriated. It's got to be a girl because it's like tight. I'm, I'm not going to... <laughs> But what type of guy would wear pants like this? I'm kidding. All right, are you ready to rate Who this? Who has a purple water bottle? <clears throat> I guess we know guys with purple water bottles. Definitely. All right. Kelly. Three, two, one. I'm going four. Four? I'm going four. What did you give it? I gave it a three. I feel like, uh, I think, I'm trying to remember what the critique was, but I remember we critiqued this image of a couple in a cave, and I said I really liked it because they didn't go crazy with the post-processing. This was a few weeks ago, mm. maybe last week. <clears throat> and I kind of feel the same way with this one. You know, it's so tempting to put in some crazy dramatic sky and images like this, but they didn't, and I like the way this feels. It feels like a classic, yet still modern image. And uh, it's cool. I like that you've, you know, you've got the detail and the... Uh, the contrast in the foreground, and then it gets, yeah. you know, uh, hazier as we go back. It, it feels real. I assume that's real. I love the lines, like the waterfall and the mountains and the tree line. Like, everything's got this nice curve to it, and then the monopod kind of follows that line, too. I think that really plays well here. Um, I guess I just wonder if it needs as much sky if you're going to go pure white. And then also on my iPad... I see like some detail in the far right, yeah, but then not too. in the middle. It just looks a little muddy. You almost could drop in a fake sky and just bring it down to like 10% opacity. So it's just something there. Maybe. 
Um, or maybe burn it out even more so that there's nothing in the sky and it's much punchier and it, it just sits well, you know, a little stronger. But I feel like maybe I would just cut off. Maybe I'd make this for the four by five ratio instead of the two by three. How bad would this image suck without the person in it? <laughs> it's like yeah. this person and this pose and the location of this person makes this image 100%. If this person just turned around and put their arm down and just smiled at the camera, this image would lose everything. Yep. Um, and then of course, if there was no person at all, you would say, what the heck? Why did you even take this photograph and why is it so overexposed? Yeah. But because there's a person there, it looks great to me. Well, it's a great example of like, you don't have to have detail in everything. So many photographers are trying to make their exposure pristine and perfect. Yeah. I think this is a great example where that shows, that, I mean, even the blacks, <clears throat> Maybe in the bush on the far left is the blackest point of this image, but I like the kind of matte look that it has. Community gives it 2.4. What is wrong with you people? Next up is number four. You are the winner of another free tutorial at fstoppers.com slash store. Send me a private message and let me know what you want. And just so you guys know, uh, we currently have the largest sale in fstoppers history currently going on. Photography 101, our tutorial is 100% free, no strings attached. So you can go over to fstoppers.com slash store and get that tutorial for free. Everything else is 30% up to 60%. Yep, the Pretty more you crazy. buy, the more you save. Um, are you ready? Ready. Three, two, one, three. I think this could be a four if you, like, I just, maybe the crop, like, I almost want him just a little bit tighter. I was thinking the same thing. There's, like, kind of weird headspace in this image. And then we also have this strange banding in the sky, which might be natural. Maybe that's just the way the clouds look and the colors look. But it looks like some sort of computer render error or something to me. Yeah. And, you know, it's got this... Is it a cow or is it a Looks like a goat? To goat. Me. Um, I don't know that you need to show the whole thing, and especially he's got like this bright tail. I'm not really a big fan of. I think if you crop in a little bit and just like make it all about him, there's still enough background and horizon line to let you know where you're at, and then it 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 kind of makes you feel like maybe there's more goats, even though there's only one. But when you shoot wide and show the whole goat, it's very obvious that like. It's not obvious that there's no more goats, but it just feels like it's the lone goat. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I feel like he's got so much texture. His his gaze and his expression is so good. Like, he looks thrilled to have his portrait <clears throat> taken. Yeah. And I think this is a really fun, cool image. Like, I like this a lot. The light wrapping around his face is really nice. And it's just a solid exposure, you know? Shooting darker skin can sometimes be difficult. And this has, like the perfect tones throughout the whole image. Yeah. I think it sits really well. I, I like this image a lot. Community, 2.82. Oh boy, they are being rough. Now you sent me a second ago uh, an image that somebody submitted. This is joyful imagery <laughs> yeah. of two naked women taking a shower together. Is yeah. That, is that coming up? Um, I, we'll have to wait and see. But okay. I, you, I was like, is this considered joy? Uh, brought me some joy. For a lot of people it might be joy. But this is not that image. No, it is not. All right, are he you He looks like he's over this. Yeah. Three, two, one. So I'm in between a three and a four on this. I thought about giving this a four. I mean, you know, whereas with the first shot, I said it didn't really feel like it fed in, fell into the family portrait genre. This one does uh, because people have pets and they like taking pictures with their pets and yep. everything. And there is a market for this. I feel like this is a beautifully shot image. I love the shallow depth of field. I love that dark background and the beautiful uh, flowers down there on the bottom. I wish we could have gotten a little bit more emotion out of the dog's face, but I think, I think this is a great image. And I think images like these are the ones that you really want to print and hang on your wall for the rest of your life, you know? It's it's not 
like the normal posy shots sometimes just feel so scripted. Yeah. But stuff like this is unique and different and you'll unforgettable. Yeah. So I feel like this would be great for a family portrait photographer. Obviously, living in Puerto Rico, especially under quarantine, you and I both are not shooting nearly as much as we used to. It's easy to say that. But when, when I did used to shoot a lot, if I had the time, I would like to, I would try to do more stuff like this, you know? If it was a portrait session, I'd try to get people to do weird things with their hands or like do quirky, strange stuff because sometimes those were the images, maybe they would never print them, but like I was just happy to get something out of these, sh uh, these sessions. That was a little more interesting, you know? And I feel like it's very mm -hmm. easy just to go down the straight standard poses and just knock everybody out, especially with couples. But the second that you can get them to do something different, dance or twirl or like lift the person up or piggyback or like any number of things that like has a high chance for failure, yeah. still gives you a chance to get something like this. And I think that's really important when you're coaching people is to say, we're gonna get all the shots of you walking and running with the dog, but like let's do something really different. And I think, like you said, this might be an image that she cherishes forever. And then because it has this quirkiness, your future clients are gonna see this and be like, oh my gosh, that's such a cool picture. And now they're open to try something different too because they've seen that in your portfolio. And you know, now with uh, social media and viral imagery and stuff, I mean, just think about what type of images will be shared. And you know, you always get clients who send you photos and they're like, I wanna do a photo like this. Yeah. But if you can be that photographer, if that client had the potential to hire the guy who actually took the photo, they're going to hire you, you know what I mean? Rather than yeah. hire some other photographer and say, hey, can you re recreate what this guy's doing? They would just go for you. So think I about that. I also always think like if you uploaded four pictures like this onto Facebook all at once, which one of those four is the one that's gonna get the most comments? Yeah. It's probably gonna be the lead image, it's the biggest, it's like the first, but then if you have to go through a bunch more, this probably is gonna get more comments than some of the other ones. So for I sure. always like to think in that way too. Community 3.31. Now, what was the first one rated? 3.35. So mm, this was close to the highest rated. Down. Okay. Now, speaking of family portraits and low res files, that one <laughs> as well has a lot of. Is it aliasing? Is that the phrase? The, the term? Or like is the jagged. What that is? The, like, the detail around. It's like JPEG artifacting where it's like not very sharp. This just feels like. Clarity boosted to one million percent. Clarity? Yeah. Oh, this looks like clarity to me. It doesn't have that like grungy feel. It, I mean, it's, it's like looks, over sharpened. It looks maybe. like it has a, like a halo around them where it's sharpened them and exaggerated maybe. it even more. Um, all right, are you ready? Yep. Three, two, one. I'm going to go two, but man, am I close to throwing a three. <clears throat> me too, me too. Uh, I, I love shooting like this, especially with family portraits. It's the easiest thing you could possibly do, yeah. but it has such a graphic impact. And I think so few photographers take advantage of this. Shooting the silhouetted shot with no lights and just making sure, you gotta make sure everyone's really, you know, profile. But you can see the detail in him looks great. You could totally tell who that guy was. If that was you, it would, it's not like a, a blobby head. It's like, it has right. the profile and looks good. The kid, again, you probably are going to do this a handful of times, but I wish the other kid's hand, I wish his hand, the second arm you could see, and then I wish you could see some profile too, because what I just said looked good with the dad looks bad with the kid. Yeah, the kid looks like a Q-tip or something, uh, a Lego a Lego man head. <laughs> Lego man. Um, I can't unsee that now. <laughs> and then, like, what is going on with this man's shirt? It's like his butt starts at the at the mid back he's mm. also got some stomach hair poking out down there so I don't know that stomach hair little things like yeah little things like that could easily be fixed you know you could fix that uh so simply but i i think the pose of the kid is good but it's all about seeing the faces you want to see two profiles yeah um and then this would be fantastic but yeah. it's just like, ugh, not quite this there. This is a great image you were just talking about retouching, um, the liquify tool. Yeah. It gets a lot of negative press. Yeah. But boy, would this would be the best place where you're not trying to make the guy look skinny or anything. You're just trying to fix the lines so that, you know, they're just appealing lines, you know, because I don't know what is going on there. I assume his shirt 
is filling with air or something, like he's yeah. throwing them up or something weird, but. Community 2.18. It's kind of like a photojournalistic type of image. <laughs> one one guy is joyful. The other guy's like, F you, bro. <laughs> I don't know. The guy on the right doesn't look as mad as he should be, right? He kind of looks like, oh, you, you pulled ahead and just barely beat me. And he, they're like friends. You feel like he looks like. I don't know, man. I don't know. He's looking right at him. It, like, normally you would think if somebody's about to lose a race, they'd be like, oh, like, Determined introspective. and looking forward. This almost feels like it's two seconds after the race. He's had time to, like, give up on <laughs> wheeling himself, and now he's, I don't know, we should rate it. All right. Three, two, one. Two? I don't know. I, I mean, like this image a lot. I feel like it's okay. I mean, for what it is, it's got the shallow depth of field. It captures a perfect moment. Maybe the crop is a little tight on the bottom, but I love that everybody in the background is, I mean, they're all head down, still going for it. Like, I think this is the lead image of this event for sure. Like, is in, has anyone else captured a better final image of this event? Like this, and you could tell it's pretty high end. I mean, it's got like a, a barricade back there with a lot of people. Yeah, that's a good point. I, I like this image. I think if you're working for the AP or something like this is as good of an image as you can get. I agree with that. For what it is, it's great. I but just if that's what your thinking. portfolio is, like if you're trying to go out and shoot events and travel the world and be like this documentary sports photographer, mm -hmm. this is a great image to have. I think it's a, is this Paralympics? Para, how do you say it? Paralympics? Paralympics maybe? I don't know. It's, it's, it's like a, a less often shot sport, which I think is great. And I think you captured it well, and you got the emotion. I like this image a lot. Maybe I'll give it a four. You're going to go with two. You're going to give it a four? I mean, I said I could. I, <laughs> I'm going to keep it as a three, but I really do like this image. Community thinks you're an idiot. 2.35. Oh. Now, how the heck do they get the dog to do that? This looks like something out of a Disney movie. <laughs> do you think... I don't see the photo. Sh I mean, there's something slightly different off that branch. There's like a line of shadow. But I was thinking, do you think somebody's there holding the stick and it's giving the dog a reason to I, jump up? I would assume that, but I don't know. It's a cute dog. What kind of breed do you think that is? Uh, I don't know. He probably sheds a lot. If I get a dog, I want a dog that does not shed. Yeah. And then that greatly limits the number of breeds you can get. I know. It's like, why? I don't want a little girly wimp dog. I want a real dog that also doesn't shed. And that limits you to, like, labradoodles and stuff, which are okay. I just know, I like, a manly dog is going to require a lot of running around and walks and stuff. And Yeah, that's what's awesome about a dog. You get these little frou-frou dogs in your family that can't, like, have to walk around wearing diapers and stuff and... They're waiting <laughs> impatiently for death to be put out of their misery. They're the horrible animals. My parents animals. and sister have always had Maltese's, and yes, they've started putting diapers on them because they'll pee everywhere. Yeah, it's like I don't know if that's like every dog of every Maltese, or if it's just they haven't trained them well. But I want a dog kind of like this, where it's in the middle. Like you're you're happy to have him sit on your couch, and he's fluffy, and you can snuggle with him. Yeah. But then they'll also go on the boat and do runs with you. Yeah. But like I don't want. You had a, a Vishla? Yeah. I don't want some muscular big dog with the claws. It's like he's always scratching you and jumping on your guests. I agree. He was insane. But having a dog that must wear a diaper is is the dumbest. <laughs> like, you might as well have a human baby at that point. I agree. Put diapers on your pets. I agree. But they've, only, they've had like eight of these dogs over 20 years. And I would say they've only been doing the diaper thing recently. So I don't know. It's weird. That <laughs> justifies it. This dog doesn't have a diaper, so maybe we should just get it along and rate this. All right, three, two, one. Four. You're going pretty high here. Maybe. I don't know. I'm in between a three and a four. I just, I... <sighs> Is there something about this pose that just makes it look a little weird? Yeah. Like you said, it's almost like a, a rendering or a Disney movie or something. It, yeah. It's just... The lighting's great. The, the background's cool. The expression on the dog's face is like... It looks like a person. This thing, it looks like it's smiling at you. It looks like a, 
you know, a, 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 a human who did motion capture for a Disney movie and then somehow they got the dog to look like that in the movie. I mean, you put a stick in a dog's mouth, it's going to make that expression. I feel like I've I seen don't our know. dogs have I feel that like all the time. I feel like this dog looks really good. Oh, it looks good. I'm just saying, like, if you took the twig out, Photoshop the twig out, you'd be like, yeah, that's a weird expression. <laughs> It but looks if like you he's put playing the, a flute or something. Yeah, if you put the twig in, it's like that's just naturally the way one what side. What did you give this, three? I gave it a three. I yeah. think for like a dog portfolio, animal portfolio, it'd be pretty cool. It's not blowing my mind, but mm -hmm. um, I think one thing that like throws me off a little bit is just there's no, and I always tried to not do this in my own photography, and sometimes it's hard. There's no sense of depth. I mean, or there's, there's two depths. It's like it's got the foreground, and then the background, but there's no mid-ground. Yeah. Or maybe this is the mid-ground with the background and there's no foreground. So it's just like this line. And it, it it's, could, it's better. This could be shot in a studio with a fake Olin Mills background is what you're saying. Yeah, it gives you that feel. But if there was a way to somehow have some boulders that were out of focus or, you know, something else to make it feel like it fit in the space a little bit better. I always like that. Maybe a lot of people out there say I'm crazy and they yeah. love this flat look. But I think in this case, I'd love to see some other branches that were coming into focus or foreground branches that were out. Something just to give it a little bit more 3D look to it. But Community 3.07. Next up. Are you ready? I am. Three, two, one. I'm going four again. I just feel like uh, this is such a classic looking image. Super unique with the hand over the face like that, but you can still see so much emotion in the eyes. The water droplets look perfect. Um, the interesting foreground element that's blocking the front, it just works. It kind of feels like fine art or something. Yeah. I keep playing with the crop, and I don't want to get rid of the color on the top. I think you lose a lot. Maybe I'm cutting off some of the bottom and then placing him to the left. I don't know if I can get it to do this on the iPad, but I kind of feel like I'm just doing that just to do it. It, it may work perfectly centered the way that it is. Yeah. Um, I guess I'm just struggling with, like, what puts this over a four or over a three. That's what I gave it. What makes this a four? What makes this a five? I don't know. It's just... It's sitting in a solid three for me. I think this belongs in your portfolio. I think it's really good. Maybe I do want to see a little bit more of his mouth. I don't know. It's a nice image. The toning is really good. Community doesn't like it as much as me. 2.81. So in the last critique, I mentioned that because I knew we were about to be trapped here for a while, I went on eBay and purchased an overpriced, partly broken virtual reality headset. I got the Oculus Rift S. And for people like me who know nothing about video games, what is the Oculus Rift? How many types of VR? Like, I remember a year or two ago, wasn't it like you put your phone into some kind of like... Yeah, that's still that's still something. You can do that, but... What um, is that called? Or... I don't know that that's that really very called first anything. generation? No, it's not the first generation. That's just like the cheapest option. And it, you sometimes see videos online where it's like two, it's like split down the middle and somehow it's doing something with your eyes to where yeah. it feels 3D. So you could like put your phone in something and watch it or I could put my virtual reality headset on and watch the video and then maybe be able to see it in 3D depending on how it was filmed. Or I might be able to like, maybe if it's not in 3D, it was still filmed in 360 degrees so you can kind of look around in the mm, video. Yeah. Um, but I specifically bought this to play Half-Life Alex, And people have been asking, daily we've been doing these coronavirus journal updates. Yep. Um, and people are asking like, we, we wanna hear your review of the game. And I'm like, ah, like I probably shouldn't talk about it during coronavirus time. So I just wanna say, I felt like it was amazing. 
I definitely see room for improvement. I'm surprised that you have shown no interest in that I have like the most powerful gaming PC here. I've got the best VR play area in the world. I've got the hottest game in the world right now and you haven't shown any interest in trying it. I mean, I played around a little bit with it. Um, Did you, you didn't play Half-Life though, right? You played... No, I played Half-Life. I jumped into some area where we couldn't get down. Oh, you're right. And you're, you're like, right. how did you get trapped there? And then I like... That's right. I, I like blew open some wall and all these monsters came out and I got destroyed instantly. You got to like drop your clips and grab them and put That's them in. Right. Like, yeah. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. But I also was kind of going through the period where I thought maybe I had coronavirus. <laughs> yeah. And I had headaches and I felt like nauseous and I took the headset off and then... You always think you know which direction you're facing, and then you take off the headset, and you're, like, up against a wall, and you're like, <laughs> oh, I didn't know I was there. And then I, I just felt a little nauseous afterwards. Yeah. It is pretty cool, but I never was into those first-person shooter games, even on other platforms when I was into video games. So. Gotcha. Well, there, there is this one level in this game where there is a, a giant monster that is invincible. You cannot kill him by shooting him. And he is blind, but he has good hearing. Okay. And so you have to navigate your way through this entire level when he is like busting through stuff whenever he hears things. Mm. And that's uh, a clever idea. Yeah. So you're you're picking up items, and you happen to be in a distillery. So you're picking up, I think, vodka bottles. Okay. And you can like throw the bottles over the monster's head, and he'll like run towards that. And then you'll have to sneak through, you know, to, uh, to, to get to the next little area or whatever. And then to get through the gate, you've got to, like, turn the crank, but the crank squeaks. Yeah. So as you turn the, the crank, like, the monster's running after you to come get you. It's huh. horrifying. Yeah. It is. Oh, and here's the other thing. The monster is, like, putting out this gas. Okay. And so when the monster's next to you, you can be right next to the monster and he won't know you're there. You're coughing or something? But you'll start coughing oh, in gosh. the game. So you have to hold your hand up, like in real life, to your mouth, and then that puts the video game character's hand up to their mouth. And then you can sit there like in the corner and the monster will be like looking at you right in the face and this gas coming mm -hmm. off of it and you just have to <laughs> be sitting there perfectly still. It's crazy. Yeah, I've never played anything like so it So basically you're telling me that if you get coronavirus, the last thing I should do is play with the remote. Yeah, I've been putting the, the remote in my mouth and stuff. Yeah, so it's well, probably not the same. Well, I, I think, like, I don't keep up with this stuff, but I remember filming Photograph in the World, I think one, and we were in some cave, ice cave in Iceland, yeah. and you guys were joking about, like, Half-Life and, you know. But there was a team there that was filming... They were mapping out this ice cave for a video game. Yeah. And you guys were all joking about, like, it's it's Half-Life 3 confirmed. Right. And uh, <laughs> finally, I mean, that, goodness, that's like five years ago, maybe? Yeah. Half-Life is fun. When, what's the time frame between the last Half-Life and this? I think 13 years. 13 years. Wow. Yeah. So it's a good one. I, I, You know, I don't know if I can justify going out and, and, and buying a VR headset just to play this one game, but... But you did it. I did it because are you going to keep dumb. the headset? Are you I, gonna... I am. I was planning on just selling the headset immediately and getting all my money back. But I am like on board with VR now, and I've played other games. They're fantastic. So it's not in its infancy like I thought it was still going to be. There's actually really good games worth playing. These kids are not practicing social distancing. They are not. I'm ready if you are. Okay, three, two, one. Two stars, we agree. I feel like, you know, interesting location, obviously interesting kids with outfits and everything. I just want there to be a cohesive concept here. Yeah. You know, like if the kid in the middle is like shooting some superpower out and the one on the right is flying backwards then I want the one on the left flying backwards too. Or if the one on the left is kicking the kid on the right, then I don't want the kid in the middle jumping and screaming. You know, I want him to be refing or I want him to be in shock. <laughs> it's almost like the two kids on the outer part of this image are in an interaction. 
And then the guy in the middle is just kind of there like, I don't know what to do. I'll just jump backwards. Yeah. It's like he's kicked him across the, you know, across the frame. But I feel like this is a cool image if you're just traveling and it's something to remember. And, like, you got these kids to – I don't know if you know these kids and you're, like, working out a photo shoot or if there's, like, a language barrier, but you got them to do this and it's kind of cool and, oh, like, look at this image I got them. And everyone laughs and you have a good time. It's cool for, like, the memory book or something, the photo album, but – I don't see this belonging in anyone's portfolio necessarily. All right, community gives it 2.75. It's strange because we are older. Like, how old are you now, 36? I think so. I think I'm 38, just turned 38. I feel like there was 10 years ago, all of my friends from high school were all having kids. And then I went through this period where, like, nobody I know has, have, has kids. And then now I feel like David, who still works for F-Stoppers, he's got a daughter about this age. My sister has a daughter. Um, I just feel like there's all these people, uh, Kathleen. Like, there's a lot of people in our lives that now have kids this age. Yep. And so I feel like, you know, I've kind of gone one time in my life where I'm like, I'm missing out because I'm not married and having kids in my 20s. And then that, like, went 10 years with nobody that has kids. And then now in our mid to late 30s, everybody's having kids again. So. I think there was a time in our lives where we shunned people who had kids. It was yeah. like the second you decided to have kids, you were out of the group. Not in a mean way, but just like, listen, bro. I think that's how it always works. We don't have anything in common anymore. And they probably felt the same way about us. Like, yeah. we were going out at night and going to bars nobody and Nobody can go to concerts. Know. Exactly. All right, let's rate this. Three, two, one. Two stars. We I don't want to give it a two. I feel... And maybe if you could crop in and just make it more about the kid. Exactly. You could salvage this image, but I want the parents to be reacting to the kids a little bit more. Or like a triangle. Like the mom is looking at the daughter with the hair pulled back and you see her laughing, but then the husband's looking at the wife. You know what I mean? Like there's like a lot of interaction going on, but this just kind of feels like... It's all about the girl, but she's so small in the frame. But it's still a, an acceptable image. I, I said this is a two because I don't think it belongs in your portfolio. But keep in mind, I, I want everyone to keep this in mind, like your couple would be thrilled, your client would be thrilled with this image. Maybe. I, I, I feel like this is a test shot before you really start getting the shots that you want. Um, I... I think this particular image is all about the baby. I think the photographer doesn't want to sit on their butt in the snow, but I think they need to get down on the baby's level, shoot with the trees behind the baby and not with the snow behind the baby, and zoom in significantly, like past the the heads of the parents and make it a wide shot that's just all oh, about just legs. Like crop and the baby. all the... Yeah, I think that's the, the, the better image for this pose, but... You should also get all the other poses as yeah, well. Yeah, we need we need the parents crouching down, not leaning and bending down to where you can't even see their faces. That's very strange. Community two point one seven. Is this joyful or is this depression? <laughs> I saw a video. Where did I see this? Was it a viral video or just something on YouTube where this guy shows off his? arcade and i mean it was mostly pinball machines and i know nothing about pinball machines but apparently they're like the most expensive arcade There's games some you can buy pinball freaks out there yeah and they had a room that looked about three times this size and then as soon as they go through and they just show maybe he had like a a gimbal and he shows and it's got the like 80s rock music and everything's decked out like this looks a little cluttered but he has it to where it's perfect right and then as soon as you're like, oh my gosh, that's like 30 pinball machines, he goes up one of those really tight sti spiral staircases, and there's a second room. And, you know, somebody did the, I think it was on Reddit is where I saw it. And okay. Somebody, I think he did one of those like power moves where he's like, finally got my do-it-yourself uh, arcade built. And then that was the video, <laughs> and people were like, this is $200,000 worth of pinball machines, you know? <laughs> But this, this picture reminds me of that. Like, how much pinball can you play? And I think... We, and they were all saying, like, what is the power bill to have these all running? And they all had the music going, and you could just hear... <laughs> <it>. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I, 
I think we all want to remember arcades from our childhood as these incredible games and everything. Because some of my fondest memories are when I could convince my dad to take us to Aladdin's castle and give us $5 and we got to get the tokens and play all the well, games. I mean, do you stuff. remember when the arcade was in every mall? Yeah. Like, I don't, kids don't get to experience this. You go to the arcade now, it's going to Aladdin's castle or it's going to William and, what is it, Buster's? What is the name of the place? I forget. Dave and Buster's. Dave and Buster's. But it used to be, you just go to the mall and there was always this, you still can go to malls probably if they're old enough and you find that one corner by the food court. Yeah. And it was clearly, it has two entrances, that's where the arcade was. And I would go there like right here in this picture, Killer Instinct, I mean that was one of my favorites. And you would yeah. go when that first came out and there'd be a line of people. And there'd always be like two guys that were total badasses. <laughs> They'd already know all the moves, and then everybody else is just watching to see the game. Yeah. It was like an event kind of like you have here with your Half-Life. Like, it, you looked forward to a new game being installed into the, the arcade, but that doesn't exist at all anymore. It doesn't, and when you go back and play a lot of these arcade games, you realize that their whole goal was to just let you play for 60 seconds and take your quarter and then make you pay another yeah. quarter. So... You, you always had this dream of like, man, if I could just have an arcade in my house, I would be the happiest guy in the world. But then when you kind of get that, I mean, you just bought... Uh, <laughs> I'm thinking like, I have, they make these like, uh, what do they call it, one-up mini arcades. And I got the, uh, the Mortal Kombat ones. It's got Mortal Kombat 1, 2, and 3 in it. Yeah. And you can hack it and like start changing the difficulties and stuff. They give you more options than what the actual console versions had. Okay. Um... But yeah, I don't turn it on all that much, but I still love it. I always wanted Mortal Kombat 2, the arcade game. Yeah. And I feel like now I have that. It's in a smaller package. I would just imagine you never play it. I haven't lately just because we've been so busy. But there are times, like especially during this quarantine, I just want to turn it on and pick smoke and just blast through a bunch of levels. Can you can you uh, take the, the board out of that and put a little computer in there and then have every arcade game yeah so there's uh youtube videos where you can you can put in better buttons you could put in they make the uh ninja turtles arcade with the four players mm. so if you had like mario kart or something that's four you could like you could put a raspberry pi in there but the problem with i think there's a new raspberry pi that's more powerful that can run the actual arcades and maybe even nintendo 64 i think the pi is before look at me sounding like i know what i'm talking about with video games yeah but um I think the Nintendo 64 is my favorite platform, and uh, those are hard to run on these Raspberry Pis, but maybe the new one can do that. Anyway, I'm going to say this is joyful, even though this guy looks like he's been under quarantine for a year or more. Are you ready to read it? I'm ready. Three, two, one. So I'm going to go three stars I don't know that this looks like joy to me. This looks like sadness and loneliness and darkness. Um, are you taking points off for that, or are you just saying it doesn't fit the theme that we set? No, I'm just saying it doesn't fit the theme, but from a photography standpoint, I really like this image, and I feel like this, you know, this could certainly be in a magazine or something. I'm trying to think if I like the crop being able to see everything that's on the left. Because, yeah. you know, we got all the movies and stuff, but that's not really video game related. That's it's nerd related. Yeah. But if you if you crop in and just make it about this guy and the video games, it feels a little bit more legitimate to me. I agree. I wish it was more about the right side only. Man, do you remember the days when, like, you collected DVDs? People and then, still do this. I don't understand. I never understood people who did this years ago. And and you know you'd have the VHS collection, and then DVDs would come out, and you'd go, oh, I gotta I gotta upgrade to DVD. And then you're getting the DVDs of stuff that you already have on VHS. And then HD DVDs came out, and you start buying those, and then that like went bankrupt. So then you got to move to Blu-ray. Yeah. And then the 4K, and then the 3D, and people keep buying the same movies again and again and again. And I'm like. You guys are being scammed so hard. Yeah. Just pay three bucks every time you want to watch it. You'll probably watch it once every five years. We have access to any movie you want now for three bucks. You don't need to buy these things anymore. I'm not even going to talk about records. We'll just not bring that up. Yeah. 
That's All right. even more of a waste of money. Community gives this 2.03. This feels, for some reason, like Venus or Serena Williams. I don't know why. And then when you like look at what she's wearing, she's in like a witch outfit. But for like, why? Why do I keep feeling like she's in a tennis outfit? Maybe I do not know. You don't feel like that at all. I mean, no. I think it's it's hard to see that that the dress is long on the left, but you know, it's kind of like a short, tight tennis dress. I don't know. This screams cosplay to me but not, you know I hate cosplay. Like I've do. always rated that really low. But this isn't so over the top that maybe if I knew who this character was, I would say, oh, it's a good or bad version of that character. But like, I don't feel like it's nothing. I'll just rate it. Three, two, one. I'm going three, two. I like this. I love the hair wrapped around. I feel like um, maybe it's her expression. Like it... it I can't figure out if this fits or doesn't fit. Like, should she be tough and intimidating or? I don't know what I'm looking at here. I feel the same way. But that costume is so crazy looking. Mm -hmm. And her hair is so crazy looking. Like, do you think the hair is done that way for the costume? Or does she naturally I wear have, her hair I don't like that? know. I have no idea. But uh, she looks interesting. Freezing. Look at her legs. Oh, she looks like she's like in a huh. cold ice studio. Cold, yeah, a nice cold room. There's kind of a strange color tone on her face. You know, it's got this like really cold greenish tint just on her face. But then the rest of her body feels a lot warmer. And then we've got a really nice uh, blue on the background that I like, but there's something about just the tone on her face that feels Well, you can see strange. it in the shadow on that thing that's on her dress, casting on the leg. Like, you can see that color grade. It's like a, it's like a blue light is filling in the highlights. Hmm. And you, I mean, you can see it on all of her skin. Something weird going on with her right arm, like by her wrist. She has these, like, really dark blotches of color see what i'm saying yeah I don't, I don't really know what else to say about this community gives it 2.77 is this joy what does this have to do with joy this is like confusion confusion yeah i don't know what is going on in this image this is also like cosplay but with maybe your wife and daughter you or, think that's the wife? I mean, she looks really young for the yeah. daughter, but like, I don't know. We were just talking about like there was a stage <laughs> in our lives where in their 20s, everyone's having kids. Maybe that's the case here, but um, I don't know. Maybe I'm just reading into it too much. All right, let's rate this. Three, two, one. I don't know. I mean, the lighting and the, the staging and everything is fantastic. Yep. But this doesn't feel, this feels like, let me feed my daughter something real quick before we start shooting so she doesn't throw a fit. This doesn't feel like this was the game plan for the photo shoot. The concept feels very strange. Like, I love the woman in the red dress with the wet red background. I like the little girls. Like, the colors and the lighting, everything's really nice. Yeah. I just don't understand what they're doing. Yeah, I guess I guess I have to give it two stars for that reason as well. Just to put this on your website without any context, it just doesn't really make any sense. But you can tell this photographer is really good. And yeah, I'd be curious to know what came after this because it feels like you said these were some quirky images I took in the middle of the shoot or before the shoot started. Yeah, maybe at the end of the shoot. But what happened during the actual shoot? Community. I feel like there's some nice stuff that was probably there. Two point five four. So if I remember correctly, this image, not to spoil it, but this image was rated fairly high, mm -hmm. and that's why I included it, but I don't know. Maybe I won't say anything else. <laughs> I'm trying to think of how to put this and have it be constructive and nice and not sound like a horrible person. 
Um, Should we rate it first? I guess so. Three, two, one. Uh, I guess I'm two stars. To. All right. Do not take this the wrong way. I know oh boy. this is your wife or someone's daughter or whatever. But if you cover up this woman's face, I feel like this image could be like a like a four or five star, you'd be like, wow, look at the intricate lighting and everything that's going on here. Like, this looks crazy. We've got the luxury coffee maker up there. You know, like, this could be a high-end ad for this coffee maker. Wow, this looks really good. And then, and then you reveal the face, and it's just this super hard light with these black shadows on the side of her face, and it feels like she's kind of hunched over. And it just, when you compare the lighting on her face, to the incredibly intricate and detailed lighting on her legs, it's like, doesn't even feel like it's the same image. Really? I feel like the lighting looks similar. It looks like hard sunlight coming through a window in a weird way, but I agree. I don't think the light placement or the facial position is great. Like she's got, it almost looks like she's got like, superhero lighting where you get that hard jawline like magneto or something <laughs> you know or like you have like storm and they always like draw the like super sharp yeah yeah facial lighting um, yeah but i agree with what you're saying but i think beyond that to me it looks like a, a very stylized kind of sexy image but i don't know i don't think this looks like an ad for is it nespresso is that what that company is maybe I it's like it's too sexy, weird for what she's doing. I almost want to say, take her out of the picture altogether and either put her in normal clothes, like really well styled clothes, or have another model altogether, but just have somebody like, just a really simple jeans and a t-shirt or jeans and a sweater and she's making coffee and it's just like a lifestyle image. This has this like sex appeal or it's trying to have a sex appeal while also trying to be lifestyle, I don't know. Like, I'm not, I gave this a two. Like, I'm not a super big fan of this. I just think a high-end art buyer isn't going to come across this image, even if the face lighting was perfect, and look at this and be like, ooh, we got to hire them. This just feels like those photographers that really, maybe people are going to be mad at me now, those photographers that really want to shoot half-naked girls, but they kind of do this, to make you feel like, oh, that's I can. way more offensive than my line about just covering her face. So I'm I'm critiquing the photographer. You're kind of critiquing the model. So I don't know. It's not just the model. It's just like the the lighting that she happens to be in. Just is maybe not you could flattering. Put, maybe you could put just a scrim on that one part of the window that is hitting her face, so that it's a little softer. Yeah. Or you have some kind of light coming in on her legs, right? There's a second light source back there casting yeah. the shadows. If that light source could just kind of fill in the shadows on the face maybe, but I don't know what's causing that hard, sharp line on her face. I don't either. Community, 2.96. It also makes me feel like it's an Airbnb because all the little pods are out and stuff. All right, are you ready? Phew, I do not know how to rate this. Yep, I'm ready. Three, two, one. Two stars, we agree. I feel like this is a, a great image to document this event. I don't know what this would be. You know, I would think this would be like a a church event or like a after school activity. I don't know what it would be, but you know, it's like all these people appear to be friends and they appear to be doing this together. They appear to know each other. And it's great for that. But should this be in your portfolio? I don't see any reason why it should I be. I used to take this picture almost every time I shot families, if they wanted to run and everyone was capable of running. Yeah. And I would, you know, get it to where you get the nice reflection on the white, wa on, you know, on the, the beach that's got the sheen and the water and everything. And you get really far, shoot so telephoto, and you get all these crazy expressions, and you got to go through and find the frame where, 
the least amount of people are blocked by the other person and they all have a good expression. Yeah. This one's interesting because like almost everyone's airborne here. But again, the client's going to love this. If this is shot for a family or this is shot for an outreach program or whatever it is, like this is a cool image. This could be, you know, for donations. Like this could be on the front or the inside cover of some pamphlet. But it's not, like you said, it's not something that goes in your portfolio necessarily. Community 2.17. Are you ready? I am ready, I think. Three, two, one. I don't want to give this a two because I love how real this feels. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of feel like I want to crop in tighter and get rid of the, the heater. Yeah, the radiator over there. And maybe like make it, maybe that makes it more airy by getting rid of those warm tones that are on the left. Yeah. Maybe get rid of that altogether. Um, you know, we always debate: are people marketable? Are they are they the type of people you want in your images that you put on your portfolio because they sell something? They sell an emotion. They they represent that product to the highest level, or they look great on the clothes. You know, we struggle with that versus real people who are giving real emotions, and these are clearly real people with real emotions, um, but. I don't know where this falls in your portfolio. Maybe that's what I'm still struggling with. This is a great moment. If this is a portrait of your parents, that's awesome. I have no pictures of my parents like this. I would love yeah. a picture like that of my parents. Yeah. Um, so it works for certain things. If this was commissioned by them, they're going to be super happy. But again, is this something that you're going to put right up in the front of your portfolio for everyone to see immediately? I don't, I don't know. I don't think so. I said it too. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I feel like this is a very genuine moment. It's not... It's not the best moment by any means. It doesn't really tell a story or anything, but I gave it three stars just because I like the feeling of it overall. Look Community. At this guy's hands. I know, he's got like ogre hands. They're huge. You know, opposite of Trump. 2.35. There's a little funny business going on in this image. Um, maybe a little. There's a lot of shadow recovery going on. For sure. All right, you ready? Three, two, one. Two stars, we agree. I would love to see someone else attempt to edit this image. I feel like uh, this image has so much potential, but the post-processing is ruining it in my opinion. It's just so HDR looking. Where is the, the depth of field on this image throws me off because the dog is out of focus. The back of the trampoline is in focus. But the boy, his shoulder and the dog tag on his arm seems in focus, but the girl's foot, it's like the depth of field. I don't know if this is like a uh, tilt shift lens or it's like somehow the depth of field is going in this really strange, it doesn't seem like it's perpendicular to the, the, the camera, yeah, right? Yeah, it does feel kind of weird. Um, I also, you know, I hate, I hate the trampoline. I wish, and the background and everything. What I love is what's going on with the kids. And the dog, you know, that's that's so good. Great expressions and everything. Love the pose of the dog. But you put him on a trampoline, you get the weird fence in the back. It just starts to feel cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. And then you add that with the bad post-processing and it just eh, kind of loses it for me. Do you think all of this uh, highlight around the dog is just natural fringing from the sun or does it like there's areas of the dog where it feels like oh that's where the highlight would be but then there's other areas where it just feels like especially the, the rope it's just so strong that it almost feels like it's like cut out or something i think it's just wacky shadow recovery it's you know pulled back a thousand percent community likes it more than us 2.96 getting towards the end here 
Number 19. I have a cousin who has a daughter, as a little girl, looks a lot like this girl, and now she's older. She's a year younger than me, and she's having children who are what? My cousin wants, I don't know how that works. My cousin has a kid. Who is that? I don't know. Is that know. like my cousin once removed or something? I don't I, know. But all of her, her little girl looks like this too. Okay. Are you ready? Yep. Three, two, one. I'm in between a three and a four. Um, incredible lighting. Love the expression. Love the blowing of the hair. I think it looks great. What is going on on the left side of this frame? This like blur halo vignette thing. It looks like there's like a blob in the sand. Yeah, I just wonder if there was something ugly right there in the ocean and the photographer, you know, made the brush huge and used the spot healing tool and just went, wow, take yeah. that out. It almost feels like, you know, when you get the GoPro and the water droplet yeah. gets on it, like, but it's a huge, there's something strange going on over there. But, ah, oh, that, like, I, now that's all that I see. <laughs> yeah. You gave this a four? I don't know. I'm in between a three and a four. Now that I, like, have time to really look at this, that keeps bothering me. But I love the tones. I love the little girl and the expression and everything. I love the red. The red pops so well on this image. Yeah. You know, you could just make this a vertical image and boom, the whole thing is fixed. Maybe, maybe I like that better. Yeah. So then it's all about the little girl. Yeah. Yeah, I think I do like that better. That looks great. You don't even need the left side. You're welcome. Community 2.97 final image. Oh boy. We've never seen anything like this before. I've, Who would have dreamed? Haven't I been on, on, on record saying how much I dislike the umbrella firing through the you know, the umbrella as a lighting source in the frame. It would be interesting to have a little mini documentary where you go back in the past and you figure out who the first person was to come up with these now cliche ideas. Yeah. And if if you could somehow follow these trends and you could be you could interview the first guy and he's like, yeah, yeah you know, I just had this idea about uh, I light with an umbrella anyway. What if I got the client to just hold the umbrella? Well, the one I hand? wanted to talk about was the, uh, I don't know if you can see them back here, but the uh, the wood boxes. Yeah, the apple boxes. The apple boxes, like now they're in every single thing. Or like, okay. I don't know if Ann Leibovitz was the first one to do the painterly background. Is her name Ann or Annie? Because you call her Ann. I think she's Annie, but I think she go, people call her Ann as oh, well. Her friends call her Ann. Yeah, okay. people on a first name basis. Okay. Um, there is an interesting documentary. I think I mentioned this in a previous episode where somebody talks about the, uh, it's like Vice or somebody. They go back and talk about the history of, oh, I wish I could remember the name of it. It's this chair. It's like this throne chair that is made out of, uh, it's like a tarp, plastic? No, it's got the woven. I don't know why I can't think of it. Oh. Um, you know what I'm talking about? I think so. It's like hatched. It's like. Yeah. I forget. But anyway, I'll have to find a link and put it in the description. This documentary just goes back and it shows when these images were first taken featuring this chair and how they started to represent different things like the Black Panther movement. And then they became, a, they, before that they were a sign of wealth because only wealthy people had them. And then like over time now they have been on more album covers and in more photo shoots than any other chair. Like just this one yeah. design chair? Oh, yeah. Oh, I wish I could remember the name of the chair. But... Same idea. Huh. Are you ready? I'm ready. Three, two, one. Three stars. We agree. Uh, People still like these images, though. Like, yeah, I mean, we call. I think they're cliche, and I'm like, oh, another see-through umbrella with the strobe inside of it, but. People do love this. Yeah, and the truth is, I mean, when we were wedding photographers, we would take the exact same photos at every single wedding. And Speak they were- for yourself. Whatever, I saw your photos. Um, and they were tired to us, yep. but to the client, They're they'd go, oh new. my gosh, you put the my wedding ring in my bouquet and took the picture of it in a flower petal. It rained beautiful. outside and you got it to look like this. Yeah. Like you saved the day, you yeah. know, and so, it's good to have these tricks up your sleeve and to be able to pull off this stuff. And, you know, I think if you're just starting out, everyone who's getting into weddings or portraiture should practice this so they know how to do it. But 
I guess, I feel like you can only put a handful of these, maybe one in your portfolio. Yeah. You can't show this trick over and over and over again. Right. And I don't like the way that this umbrella looks. You know, I feel like if you're going to do it, why not get a black umbrella with... White inside? Like yeah. an actual photography umbrella? Or just a real life umbrella. I don't know. But the idea that you can see this clear, exploding bright umbrella, I feel like that that removes the power of the image. You want to be able to see the expression on the mother and child, which I feel like are so great in this image, but yeah. the umbrella looks crazy. I agree. What do you think's happening right behind them? It's like black, right above the little girl's hoodie. Is that just the natural flare or it just seems strange? You would think that that would be kind of the same tone as the rest of the sky around it. I think that's, I think that's just the, the light is firing up and towards the camera and that's it like spilling past the sides, I would guess. All right, let's be done. An hour, is that normally how long these critiques are? I've know, lost so track, we, we keep doing these other videos on the coronavirus and they're always an hour. I know, and now we gotta film one of those. Yeah, but it feels good to talk about photography. It does, it does. If you'd like to uh, be a part of the next critique, go to fstoppers.com slash contests and head over to fstoppers.com slash store. Uh, check out the free tutorial, the on sale, sale tutorial, and figure out which one you're going to ask for when you win next week. Maybe we'll make the next contest like a week from now so it gives people time to come up with their shoot concept for quarantine imagery. Sounds good. See you guys.